Hello students, welcome to the channel. In today's video of Basics Explained, we will discuss plane and solid geometry. Plane and solid geometry is part of both SAT and ACT math. So it's an important topic that you should be comfortable with. So let's begin. So when it comes to the SAT, you are given a lot of information already on the test paper. On the first page of the no calculator and calculator sections, you're given a list of items, formulas and figures that are helpful. On the ACT, you're not given this information, but on particular questions in the ACT, you might be given formulas. For example, if they want you to find the volume of a cylinder, then they would mention in the question that the volume of a cylinder is given by V is equal to pi r squared h and so on, right? So let's quickly look at what all is given to you on the SAT math section, right? So a circle is given, uh, a circle of radius r, its area pi r squared and its circumference to pi r are mentioned here. Uh, a rectangle of length l and width w are given and its area is given. Uh, we should also remember that the perimeter of a rectangle is two times the sum of length and width. So that's another formula to remember. A triangle is given with base B and height H and the area half base into height is given. A right triangle is given with hypotenuse C and the other two sides A and B. So the Pythagoras theorem C squared is A squared plus B squared is given. Okay, and two special right triangles are given, the 30, 60, 90, and the 45, 45, 90 triangle. And the side uh, ratios are given, right? So this I think is particularly useful because for example, if I don't remember that sine 30 is half, then I can look at this triangle and I can see that opposite over hypotenuse x by 2x will be half. Um, similarly, if I don't remember that cos 45 is 1 by root 2, then I can look at this triangle and I can look at base over hypotenuse s by s root 2, which is 1 by root 2. So these special right triangles are helpful in determining the trigonometric ratios of 30, 60, and uh, 45 degrees, which are often tested. Okay, when it comes to solid figures, you have a cuboid of length L with W and height H given, and the volume is L W H. Uh, you have a cylinder of uh, base radius R and height H, whose uh, volume is pi R squared H. You have a sphere of radius R whose volume is four by three pi R cubed. You have uh, a cone of radius of base R and height H whose volume is one third pi r squared h, and you have a pyramid of uh, base with length l and width w and height h, whose volume is one third l w h. Now there is one concept concerning volume that you should know. So volume for a body that rises straight, volume for a body that rises straight is area of base multiplied by the height. What do I mean for a body that rises straight? It means that the height, the way the body rises is perpendicular to the base, right? For example, here or here, right? And in both cases, you can see that the area of the base is L into W into height is the volume. Here, the area of the base is pi r squared into height is the volume. Now, volume for a body that does not rise straight, but converges to a point, right? For example, here and here. Here you see that the height, the way the body is rising is not perpendicular to the base, but is converging to the point. That volume is one third area of the base multiplied by the height. And you can see that's exactly what happens in both cases. Area of the base is pi r squared multiplied by height and one third of that. Area of the base is LW multiplied by height and one third of that. 
So this is a general formula that you can use for bodies that rise straight and for bodies that converge at a point. And we'll be using it in one of the questions later. Okay, the other thing that you need to remember, which is given is that the number of degrees of arc in a circle is 360. And we know that, right? That if you take a full circle, the angle is 360. And the number of radians of an arc, of arc in a circle is two pi. So that tells us that two pi radians is 360 degrees. And this is an important relationship that's tested on some questions, especially on the SED, right? And then the sum of measures of angles in a triangle is 180. So that's again, something that we know. Okay, so let's do a couple of questions. Uh, oh, before that, there are some more things to remember. Um, what is a trapezium? A trapezium is a body uh, or rather it's a quadrilateral, which has four sides, two of which are parallel, right? So the area of a trapezium is given as half sum of parallel sides. So let's say this is A and B. So it is half times A plus B multiplied by the height. The height is the distance between the parallel sides, right? This is the height. So that's the area of a trapezium. What about a regular hexagon? Uh, in recent SATs, we have seen questions on regular hexagons, so you need to know this. So basically, a regular hexagon is a six-sided figure of all sides equal. And if you notice, if I join the diagonals, I end up getting one, two, three, four, five, six, six equilateral triangles, right? I end up getting six equilateral triangles. So if the side of the regular hexagon is A, the area is six times the area of one equilateral triangle. And we know that the area of an equilateral triangle of side A is given by root three by four A squared. So the area of a regular hexagon of side A is given as six times root three by four into A squared or side squared. Right, and one more important concept that if you have a square, then the diagonal of the square will be the hypotenuse of the right triangle with the basis being S and S, it's an isosceles right triangle. And so the diagonal by Pythagoras theorem would be S root two. Okay, let's now do some sample problems. The volume of right circular cylinder A is 22 cubic centimeters. What is the volume in cubic centimeters of a right circular cylinder with twice the radius and half the height of cylinder A? Okay, so let's say the uh, radius of A is R and the height is H. So the volume of A is pi R squared H, right? The formula of a volume is pi R squared H. Now I have to find the volume of another cylinder, let's say B. So VB is going to be pi. The radius of this is twice the radius of A. So two are uh, the whole squared and its height is half the height of A. So H by two, right? So that becomes pi, two R whole squared is four R squared into H by two. This two cancels with four to give two, so I get two pi r squared h. So if my volume of A was pi r squared h, the volume of B is twice of that. Since the volume of A is 22, the volume of B, the volume of the new cylinder would be 44, option C. Okay, question two, the side length of square ABCD is twice the side length of square EFGH. So let's say the side length of EFGH is X, then the side length of ABCD is two X. If the area of square EFGH is nine, what is the area of square ABCD? So X squared is given as nine, right? Area of the square, so X would be three, if x is 3, then what is the side of ABCD? 
side of ABCD is 2x, which is 6. So what is the area of ABCD? That is 6 squared, which is 36. So that's our answer. Question three, a dairy farmer uses a storage silo that is in the shape of the right circular cylinder above. If the volume of the silo is 72 pi cubic yards, what is the diameter of the base of the cylinder in yards? Okay, so we know that the volume of the cylinder is pi r squared h. Volume is 72 pi is pi r squared and height is 8 yards. Pi and pi cancels, 8 cancels into 72. So r squared is 9, so the radius is Three. This is the radius of the base, but we have been asked the diameter, which will be twice the radius. So the diameter is six yards. Okay. Sample question four. The figure shows a regular hexagon with sides of length A and a square with sides of length A. Okay, so we have a regular hexagon and a square that share a side and the length is A. If the area of the hexagon is 384 root 3 square inches, what is the area in square inches of the square? Okay, so we know that the area of the hexagon is 6 times root 3 by 4 a square, 6 times the area of one equilateral triangle, and that is given as 384 root 3. Root 3 and root 3 gets cancelled, so a square is 384 into 4 by 6. So six, um, six are 36, six fours are 24. So A is eight into two, which is 16, because A squared was 64 into four. So if I take the square root eight into two. So A is 16, the side of a square is 16. So the area of the square would be 16 squared, which is 256, option A. Okay, uh, sample question five. The volume of the right triangular prism shown is 96 cubic centimeters. What is the area in centimeters squared or one of the triangular bases of the prism? So this question is where we use the concept of the volume that we discussed. So let's say I put it in a vertical position, right? So how would this look in a vertical position? I have a triangle here and I have a triangle here. And these, this is how the sides will be joined, right? Uh, just trying to make it look natural, right? So the volume of this figure is going to be area of the base into height because it rises straight. Now volume is given as 96, area of the base is what we have to find and the height is 12. So what will be the area of the base? 96 over 12, 12 sevens are 84, 12 eights are 96. So the area of this triangular uh, base of the prism would be eight centimeters squared, right? So that's how you can solve questions on plane and solid geometry. Hope this exercise was useful. If it was, hit like and subscribe to the channel. Let me know in the comment section what other videos you'd like me to upload. There is a whole plethora of topics that I have already uploaded in the Basics Explained series. So do check this out. It would help you with most of the math questions that you see on SAT and ECT. I'll see you guys in a new video soon. Take care. Bye-bye.